Arizona is home to many venomous creatures, including 13 species of rattlesnake. Despite there being so many dangerous snakes in the state, they are mostly harmless as long as you leave them alone. Yeah. Still, it's a good idea to educate yourself about them just in case you should encounter one on your desert travels. All right, what's going on? Hanging out with Joe Himes, and he is the master of the Venom Room at the Phoenix Herp Society. And today, we're gonna do a bit of a continuation of a video we started in Florida. Well, you've seen the venomous snakes of Florida. Well, today, we're gonna show you the most popular or the most common venomous snakes that you could run into here in Arizona. So stick around. This is gonna be a really educational episode of Camp Kennedy. A good portion of my life has been all about action, which still holds true. But now I pour all that time and energy into wildlife conservation, education, and the pursuit of knowledge. This is Camp Kennedy. All right. You, you know what, man? I'm really excited, uh, Joe, because I haven't actually, you know, a couple years ago when I was here, I did see a uh, Western Diamondback. Uh, I'd love to start with a Western Diamondback if you got one, uh, because it's definitely a common snake that you'll find out here, isn't it? Uh, definitely the most common that we get. We do okay. a lot of snake removals for people's homes, and Western Diamondbacks are the ones that, nine times out of ten, if we're going to remove a rattlesnake, it'll be a Western Diamondback. It'll be a Western Diamondback. All right, man, let's talk about it. Let's get them on out here. Of course, in Florida, we have the Eastern Diamondbacks. They're a large snake. The Westerns are a little bit smaller. We got to remember which bucket it's in, right? Yeah, no Western problem, here. <laughs> this is awesome. So I really want to thank Joe for wrangling up all these snakes and moving them out here. So we, I just like seeing snakes out in the environment. You can kind of see how their patterns are going to blend into this kind of habitat. I have a question. Oh, of course. As you take this snake out, how close can I be? Where should I be? Just well, you should be back here. <laughs> That's the line. That's the line. You Don't stay there. there. And if the, the safe line. Yeah. And if the snake comes near you, you back up. I'll run. Yeah. Okay. I'll drop the camera run. Too. Just back up. All right. All right, man. So we're going to start with the. Uh, the Western Diamondback. Do it, man. Do you mind? Oh, go for it. Is that all right? Absolutely. All right, dude. So this, you know, a few years back when we went out to Bob Blum's place during one of our retreats, we gotta get a mid body here. Here we go. There it is. And look at this. I mean, Joe, it's awesome. Uh, they're not a rather large snake. How big do these guys top out at? Well, here in Phoenix, where we don't get a lot of rainfall, not a lot of resources, they top out about three feet. We okay. get a four foot one, it's real big, but they, they're capable of getting to six feet long. Okay, right on. So, but that's in certain areas, maybe a, what they call riparian area where there might be some water. Where there's more water, or if you head over to Texas and there's just more rainfall in general, you okay. get some of those bigger six foot monsters. So that's interesting, guys. You know, out here in the desert, life is possible, but it's tough. So a smaller body, less resources. Uh, you know, these guys are gonna be eating a lot of ground squirrels, birds, things of that nature. Yep, ground squirrels, birds. We get a lot of pack rats out here. We'll find them around their nests all the time. Really? Now, you know, I was just talking to a friend of mine. He said that he's got an AC unit. It was dripping. So a lot of birds will come over to that AC unit. A lot of uh, rodents will come over and drink. And he says he's got a diamondback that lives over there on purpose because he knows this is where animals come. This, I don't have to actively hunt. I'm an ambush predator. So it makes sense that he'd find a water source and wait by it. Do you find that's something these animals tend to do? Oh, absolutely. Over by the heaters and coolers where you get that condensation, we always check for rattlesnakes. Even though it's not the rattlesnake we're going out to remove, we just double check because we'll be out on a call, remove one snake, and then go and find another one right over there. Ah, and yeah. The same thing with people who keep them. Now, you guys, you guys provide an incredible uh, service to the community, and you charge $75 to remove a snake. All that money actually goes to the society here, the Phoenix Herb Society, uh, and it keeps these guys, and keeps Joe employed, and it keeps snakes out of harm's way, and you'll just go ahead and re, you know, you'll go ahead and re, uh, kind of repatriate them somewhere else, right out in the desert? Yep, usually as close as we can to where we found them. If at all possible, no more than two miles tops. This guy's actually really, they're used to you and they're used to being handled, right? This is one of our education ones when we go out to schools, teach kids about the native wildlife. This is one of our go-tos that we go box up and take to Yeah, I can see why. This is a we very well-behaved animal. It is kind of stepping a little too close to me there, so. And you know, it's amazing. It doesn't take long before they figure out, hey, 
this bush looks nice. <laughs> How many snakes are you guys keeping right now in the reptile room, in the venomous snake room? Uh, venomous alone, we're right around 200 snakes. Wild. We always have stuff coming and going from other facilities or from game and fish, but usually we're right around 200 snakes. That is amazing. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this one back in and we'll move on to another species of rattlesnake. So there's our first venomous snake here. So that's really cool. So we're gonna be seeing a lot of rattlesnakes. Now, we don't have all 13, but we wanted to show you the most common uh, species. So which is the next one we're gonna look at, buddy? It's your choice. Oh, Dealer's right. choice there, Joe. Well, is, that, is that the most common, what we just this, looked at? We just at? looked this at the, the most, most common, common so rattlesnake. what would be the next most common one? Okay, we there we go. It. Next most common would have to be the Mojave rattlesnake over here. I've got him in the orange bucket because he is the most venomous out of the lot. Okay. Yeah. By some accounts, probably the most venomous species of rattlesnake in the world as well. It's not just Arizona. How much venom yield will this... Oh, that's a beautiful snake. How much venom yield, um, when they do envenomate someone, do you get? Do you get a pretty good, a pretty good uh, dose? It really depends on the size of the snake. Okay. Uh, their venom yield is limited to the space that they have in the back of their head there. It gives All them right. that characteristic viper-shaped head. Uh, but with them, it doesn't need to be a lot. And what makes them so toxic is they actually possess a neurotoxic venom. Oh, okay. And they're really interesting because half the population, when you're down in southern Arizona, you're more likely to have the neurotoxic venom. Then moving up into northern Arizona, you lose that completely and you get almost uh, just a hemotoxic venom. So let oh. me understand that. So the same species of rattlesnake has different toxicities, different properties to their venom. Yeah, they've got a venom type A and a venom type B. So that makes things pretty difficult for anyone who got bit. If you don't know where you were bit or they, they need to know where you bit for the anti-venom to work, correct? It's definitely an important factor. They're gonna give you crofab no matter what. Okay. It's a rattlesnake bite in Arizona, but a big factor for how long you have to get that anti-venom comes down to where in the state you were and what type of venom it had. How many calls a year is Phoenix Herb Society handling uh, for, for venomous snakes? Well over 300 calls a year. No way. Will Absolutely. you go out on some of these calls? Oh yeah, I've done probably 30 personally this year. No way. That's You guys are busy out here, man. What Your peak, I would imagine that your peak uh, seasons are going to be spring and summer? Spring and actually dies down a bit in summer because okay. it's too, too hot, hot out here. here. Uh, we'll get You're watching me right now. I'm watching you. You got it, but this is something you got to watch yourself too, buddy. Because <laughs> <You know? laughs> right, the hook close. can't do too much. Um, <laughs> But you see, that's that characteristic. Now again, and, and guys, what we like to do with these videos is we're not trying to scare you, we're trying to educate you. So if you're in Arizona, we want you to see these animals, but look at what the, the body positioning is of the snake. That should tell you that this snake is afraid. He's curling himself up. He's gonna, if you start to step too close, he's gonna rattle. If you get even closer, that's when he's gonna feel threatened. That's when he's gonna bite. And so, you know, the same thing, I'm sure you do the same kind of education out here. Tell people the best thing to do when you see a venomous snake is to back up and leave it alone. Don't chop the head off the snake. Most people will get envenomated trying to kill the snake. Leave the snake. The snake does not want to mess with a human being. Um, so this is the second most popular snake. It's beautiful. And, and the, the other cool thing about getting them out here, Joe, as you can see, you know, with our environment, their camouflage is basically a direct response of where they live, what habitat they're in. So, you know, you find these guys, uh, will these guys be true desert? They're at their desert level. They're not at like a montane species, are they? These are more, yeah, in the flat areas okay. of the desert. Tend gotcha. to be in the slightly uh, place where there's more rainfall, a little bit wetter. Okay. But still in the flatlands of the desert. Gotcha. Okay, Joe, let, do your thing, brother. <laughs> I mean, I don't mean, I just love... Uh, getting hands on with these animals, so I appreciate you giving me the opportunity. Yeah, we'll do that one team. <laughs> Got him? Yep. Cool, man. Oh, this is awesome, guys. We're learning. I'm getting hands on with some animals that I just never see. Um, you know, you just don't see a lot of these animals in, uh, well, I live in Florida. <laughs> it's not a desert, it's subtropical. Uh, what's next on the uh, list, man? Um, most common uh, after the Western Diamondback and after the Mojave would probably be the blacktail rattlesnake. Ooh, cool. At cool. least in this area where we have some mountains nearby where okay. we can find them. So they'll cut, they'll live kind of in that uh, transitional zone between mountains and desert? Yep, uh, or on the mountains themselves. Okay. And you won't find these down in the flatlands. Go ahead, you want to spin it off? I don't know, just at least get it started. There yep. we go. Now, is it possible that they would jump right out? 
No, not really. No. Okay, I'm just asking Lane and just for curious. That's all here. right, buddy. That's good. <laughs> you, you know, it's always good to have a little bit more uh, care. And right away, you could just see the variation. Um, what do we know about the venom on this particular animal? So the venom on this is worse. It's not as bad as Mojave, but it's worse than if you were, say, bitten by a Western Diamondback. The venom's more toxic, but they're not nearly as likely to bite. They're kind of a more calm demeanor snake. All right, Tom, go ahead and just look on out. Oh yeah, so these, none of these animals are as large. Like, you know, in our last venomous snake episode where we were explaining the venomous snakes, you know, we have the Eastern Diamondback. It's the largest venomous snake uh, in the United States, but this animal and most of the animals we've seen so far, they're kind of, you know, they're, like you said, six foot is going to be what they're going to top out at. Uh, so it's just amazing to see body plan here, body size, you know, the desert limited resources once again, but these guys are all well behaved. How often, um, when you're working with the, the venomous snakes, do you see, uh, any kind of, you know, real defensive behavior where they are striking at you? Uh, do they calm down? They in captivity? They absolutely calm down to a certain extent. You have some snakes, just like some people have a nasty attitude. Some right. snakes, no matter how you work with them, how often you work with them, they're going to be striking around you. But as you can see, with most ones we're pulling out today, as long as you're handling them gently and giving them respect, they're not going to be trying to bite you or attack. No snake attacks, they only defend themselves. Right. And that's what it really comes down to. So again, where can people where can people see these animals if they're out in Arizona or if they're staying at a relative's house? It's going to be in more like foothills type situation? Yep, you're going to find the black tails more up in the mountains. Okay. They, uh, you can almost draw a line straight across the middle of Arizona to show their range. Okay. Uh, but anywhere where there are mountains in that area is where you'll be able to find black tails. Gotcha. And of course, guys, they get that name from the black tail right there. Uh, do they use, you know, I've seen like um, out back east we have um, a keistradon piscivorius, I'm trying to think, a copper, a cottonmouth. And the cottonmouth or the water moccasin will sometimes use, when they're neonates, they'll use their tail as a lure. Obviously, I don't know if these guys are doing that because if they wiggle their tail, it's going to rattle, right? Um, but does that black coloration serve any kind of purpose for them uh, in the wild? Is it a lure? Is it just, why the black tail? Uh, is there a plant they're living near? The rocks? I mean, I'm just curious because it's just interesting how the rest of them is so cryptically patterned and they got that black tail. This may not be a question you can answer. I'm just asking it, buddy. I'm not aware of any use like that. Okay. Uh, if you look at, if you notice on the Mojave rattlesnake and the Western Diamondback, they both have the black and white striping near the tail and they call the coon tail on them. So I don't know if it was just a result of the reduction of that pattern. Okay. But uh, I, okay. I'm really not aware of a specific reason so why that, they've got that, the black tail. You know what, that brings up a good point. Are all of these, um, the animals you're showing us right now, so far that we've seen, are they all in the same genus? Uh, all the ones I brought out here are in the same genus. We okay. Have, uh, so then I, I get what you're saying. So it's just, you know, it's basically just geographic variation on the tail. Like, a large part. Okay. Cool. Want to put this one back in its bucket and we'll continue moving on down our list of most common venomous snakes here in Arizona. Awesome. And well behaved, I got to tell you, man. <laughs> the last video we did, we had a water moccasin go completely nutty and shot out between our legs. We did the right thing. We just froze, but you know, let's, let's not repeat. Let's that. not repeat that. But luckily, the rattlesnakes don't—they're they, not as quick uh, as the um, as like a water moccasin or a copperhead. I mean, they're natural. They're natural things to either slither away or to just go into that defensive position yeah, that we've seen. Posture up or get out. Yeah, cool. All right, what's next, Joe? Uh, well, moving away from stuff that's really common out okay. here. Okay. Um, Show off uh, tiger rouse, like another one of our more mountainous species. Okay. Is there a montane species? Montane species. Hold on, buddy. Yeah, Go ahead. Mine. We'll you. get it started. And I'll back it on up. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is awesome. So even smaller now, now we're talking about, this is an adult snake? Yep, this is an adult snake. This one's actually fairly large for a lot of the tigers that we see out here. Oh my God, look at this thing. And he's just got that, I mean, it's funny, man. The smaller you are, the louder you have to be sometimes, right? I mean, you get a little bit of that Napoleonic complex, and you can see right away he's in that position. But look where he's going, everybody. He's, I'm right here. He's keeping me in his sight, but you notice that while I moved forward, 
he went back. He's even just chilled out right now. So if we allow this animal, see the movement kind of got him going again. But if we allow this animal space, this animal does not want to risk getting stepped on or killed. That's why nature gave them that incredible rattle. Uh, so you can hear them from miles away. And one of the things that we tell people, and I'm sure it's similar to, to what you tell folks out here in the desert is, when you're trudging through the desert, if you're nervous, you know, you stamp your feet, make some noise. Uh, the snake's whole body is on the ground and they can really pick up those low frequency vibrations through their entire body and guarantee you, you've walked by hundreds of snakes and have never seen them because we're loud, we're clumsy, and they want nothing to do with us. It's when you get the surprise. And actually, a tiger rattlesnake, if you're out there hiking and rock climbing, I would imagine putting a hand up on a blind uh, handhold would be That's one of the ways you get fish. should say that. Talk to me, man. <laughs> About a year ago, I was hiking on a mountain just right over there. And okay. Nearly set my hand down on top of one. Got get to the top, it was actually on the peak of the mountain, and had no idea was where the camp, he was there. The camouflage was doing its job and didn't know that he was there until he finally started rattling and he was probably less than about a foot away from my hand and uh, gave me a little warning that he was there and he didn't want me getting any closer see so that's what you you know guys a lot of what you do um when you're in an environment why we're doing these videos is when you go to an area where you know there are venomous snakes it's up to you to be educated it's up to you to behave appropriately out in the bush uh and this way you uh don't become a statistic man so great story i'm glad i kind of brought that up because i remember being a young lad when i got my first books on reptiles and one of the illustrations was a, a climber putting his hand up and that's how you get bitten it's almost always a uh, mistake or you are you know molesting the snake you're, you're going after the snake so this is a really beautiful snake and it gets its name tiger from those stripes i would imagine all right man let's keep going we are doing it here this is uh this is going to be one of my favorite episodes because i am learning a great deal and whenever i get to learn i'm stoked and, and you're, you're getting the handle <laughs> and i'm getting the handle i love this because joe's being very kind to me allowing me to do all the uh hook work you know Go. Sweet. Cool, man. All right. What is next? I don't know. It's a surprise. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Russ is hanging up. Just so you know, Russ is hanging up. Tom Russ is like the dutiful mentor. Tom just wants mentor. hazard pay. He, he's the, he wants hazard pay? Yeah. yeah. Do you need to hazard pay, Tom? Let me tell you something no, about Tom. I don't need hazard pay. Guys, you no. know about Tom, right? <laughs> Every episode, Tom gets hurt, maimed, or beaten. It's a, <laughs> we're going to keep him away from the snake. But anyway, Russ is looking on like the mentor he is. And I got to say, Joe's doing a great job, man. Yeah. Joe is doing a great job on the show. What do we got, brother? Pull it on out. So less common, but I had to pull one out because of just how gorgeous they are. I have a blue speckled rattlesnake. Okay. What do we got? And this Get is every one of species relies heavily on its camouflage. For okay. Survival. Look out. Mm. Blue speckled rattlesnake. I know you snake nerds are getting a real treat today. There we go. Everybody look on out. They ride the hook nice. Generally. Look at that animal. Oh, look out there, Tom. We got it. We got it. <laughs> hey. what, what did I say earlier? We, we had to have one. <laughs> we had to have one little rascal. Oops. Tom's gone. I, I tripped on something, sorry. That's all right. As long as, you got it, brother? As long as, um, get that bucket over here. I suggest Tom, but that's okay, it's just me. Yeah. There we go. And you see now, Slow guys, here's, here. here's the perfect example. So he's not, these tongues are not hurting the snake, but the, just the fact that the snake was restrained, you saw what it did. It did, a, it turned around, and gave a bite, but the bite wasn't really that aggressive. It was just a quick little, hey man, better let off me. And that's why we keep telling you folks, do not mess with a snake if you don't have the experience and its inclination is to get away. You're gonna get bit if you do what we're doing without the proper tools or trying to cut its head off. Snake's head belongs on its body. This, this animal, uh, it performs an incredible function. Rattlesnake venom has been used now, it's being used in many different kinds of medicines, from diabetes uh, to arthritis, a lot of medicinal properties. And going so far back, heads up, going even so far back as when 
when the uh, Romans and what, what was it? There was the medical crest. If you look at what the medical crest of the United States is, the Doctors Association, you'll see two snakes on it. Going so far back into prehistory, people knew that these animals possessed a very vital um, medicinal value because of their venom and they were revered and it wasn't until uh, Christianity in the Bible that they kind of got a bad rep so we're trying to educate you guys and let you know what they're up to I'm talking a lot we got one more snake to see this was a beautiful and, and exciting one let me ask you I mean the way Go this ahead. guy was squirrely why you know is it just the demeanor of this particular type of snake? Joe or? can answer that. I mean, if you want to. It's like people, they all have different personalities. This one, you can see him on the sand here. His camouflage isn't made for this type of dirt. So he knows he's not blending in and wants to get into some cover where he's not going to get picked off by a, a larger predator or scary snake handler. Exactly, man. And the other thing is, remember what I said, guys, the smaller ones, you know, they, they have those kind of, uh, that Napoleonic complex sometimes. Uh, just want to get away. But yeah, good, good on you, man. <laughs> now that, that was a pissed off bite. And, and that would have been, you know, that's a ride to the emergency room right there. So, uh. The average bite in Maricopa County here, if you have no complications, the average bite, the treatment price is $150,000. What? We know one person that had complication, his bill ran $314,000. Oh. So that's why we're doing this video today in conjunction with the Phoenix Herb Society. We're trying to save you money. Uh, so there you go, folks. We're trying to, we're trying to keep you in the uh, black. And uh, just, you see a rattlesnake, call them if you live out here in Arizona. And uh, their $75 d d donation goes directly to them. And that's good. We have one more. I'm excited. This is going to be my first time seeing this snake in person. I've been backstage at rock concerts. I've been, you know, at major sporting events and I don't get as excited meeting celebrities as I'm about to meet this celebrity right here. Bring out the sign widener, man. I'm stoked. Now, Tom, I don't know. This, guy now, this guy's going to move, right? This guy can move. Um, so we're going to have to be uh, pretty quick on the hook. That is beautiful. Not normal by any This any is not means. a normal, this is not a normal coloration. No, we usually have a lot more black pigmentation, a lot more gray in it. This, this is black. amazing. Tom, step back. I'm gonna pull this animal out. And, and tiny, just a little guy. But here's the thing, guys. I'm colorblind, right? That's why I don't get into morphs much, but I can see that this is a special animal. And I'm gonna pull it right out. I want to keep it away from the bushes because I would imagine these guys can move kind of fast. It depends, all depends on their mood. All right, I'm having a hard time hooking it. Hold on, there we go. No, 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 I like, I'll do the hook. Stand back. Let's just see if we can get some of that sidewinder. I don't know. Now, usually they sidewind when they're moving quickly. So snakes have a lot of different kind of modes of transportation. There we go. And there we go. That is incredible. This is awesome. And their rattle is like a buzz, isn't it? Yep. So it's very similar to our pygmy rattlesnake in the sound. Look at this, man. This is the best day ever. <laughs> I'm looking at a sidewinder. Oh boy, oh boy, get the tongs. All right, I, I, he couldn't get through my boot. He couldn't get through my boot. Don't do this at home, folks. We're trained professionals. Yes, we are. <laughs> well, at least we think we are. Uh, anyhow, all right, so let's, let's see if we can do that one more time. Be ready on the tongs. I, I wouldn't have let him go. But you see where he wants to go? He wants to go right for the cover. Get you got him, buddy. I don't. I was. Hey, get yourself out of the way before worrying about him. Uh, yeah, I, I. All right. I'm sorry. Uh, but I figured he can't get through my boots. But anyhow, so there it is, guys. And if you can get real close, one of the other characteristics I want you to see on the snake is the scales above the eyes. There. Look at these. These are, they look like two horns and give this animal a very ominous look. These guys, this one isn't necessarily the, the typical one as you mentioned, but Russ, uh, you have an interesting bit of info that I want to know about this snake and most people will find this in, in good info right here. Well, you know, comparatively to the other rattlesnakes, they have fairly short uh, uh, fangs, uh, but their venom is uh, a little bit stiffer than your normal rattlesnake. And you think about it, one of their biggest diets is lizards, and reptiles die slower because of their metabolism, so it takes a more potent venom. Uh, the crow fab still treats it, but it's, it, believe it or not, for a very diminutive species, it's a bad bite. And another reason that they go serpentine like that is not only are they in the sand, it's like you and I kicking it into four-wheel drive, but you got to remember, that sand is red hot, so they only have two or three small parts of their body at any given time to basically air cool their body so they don't overheat. This is some great information, guys. I want to thank Russ 
and I would like to thank Joe for uh, taking the time to pull these animals out and give us a real education on some of the snakes that you will find, some of the venomous snakes that you will find here in Arizona. Remember guys, we didn't even, we're just about half is what we saw. There's 13, we saw six, there are 13. There are 19 with the subspecies, okay? Maybe we'll come back and we'll do another video out here next year where we get the rest of them. But for now, I just want to say thanks to the Phoenix Herb Society. If you want to donate and help them continue their mission of education and rehabilitation and protection of these incredible animals, go to phoenixherp.com. You'll find out how you can make a donation. No donation too big or too small. And if you are in the Phoenix area and you want to come out and see the facility, go ahead and go to the website as well and you can get a guided tour throughout the facility. So thanks again. Oh, and by the way, if you want, to help us out, go to patreon.com slash Camp Kennan so we can continue to bring you guys a lot of great content. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time. Let's get this little devil in his bucket and we'll get them back. Good job. You had a good time, huh? Hell yeah, man. That was great.